Time now for The Real Estate Connection with Stephen Thayard, a realtor and certified probate and real estate specialist. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned investor looking to downsize, move up, or refinance, this program is for you. A house in the middle of a street. A that you go to in the middle of a street. From probate sales to landscape design to home repairs and maintenance, this is your weekly look into all things real estate. Now your host for the Real Estate Connection, Stephen Thayard. Hey, I made it. I'm back. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Connection brought to you by... Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership. Thank you very much for joining me, and I appreciate you spending some time with me afternoon as we discuss how to navigate another tough 22 real estate market. All right, so we're going to talk about, as a buyer, what works and what does not work in this market. And yes, we're in another tough market, even though you would think, based on all of the world events that is going that have been going on uh, from the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, uh, to us being in the heat of the pandemic in 2021, coming out of it in 2022, and now dealing with uh, d uh, difficulties on the world stage with uh, war in Europe, um, with uh, uh, the Northern Bear, uh, uh, Russia, and oil, and gas prices, and inflation, and interest rates, that it would have like slowed this thing down. But... It's still crazy out there, and I can attest to it personally, uh, working in it 100% full time as a real estate professional. And oh, by the way, I'm never too busy to help you either. If you have any questions or uh, need any help with residential real estate, um, give me a call, Stephen Thayard at 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. Uh, I'm uh, with Good Patriot Realty. Uh, and California DRE number 0170019. Okay, so with that being said, also, if if you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, smash that for me, like the show, and also um, hit the subscribe button and give yourself that bell. Ding, ding, ding. Do I have a bell? Do I have a bell? Yeah, there you go. Hit the bell. Um, that way you get an alert every time uh, the show comes on if you don't want to watch it recorded. And if you're on Facebook, uh, like the show and create a watch party for me if you would be so happy to do so. If not, you can send me an email at info at realestateconnectionradio.com. Again, info at realestateconnectionradio.com. And I will add you to the podcast distribution list. I, my clients are on there, uh, past clients, friends, family. Uh, it's starting to grow. It's a blessing. Thank you, Lord. And so if you want to just get an email letting you know when it's being uh, published, um, go ahead and send me an email right now. So without any further ado, let's jump right on in. So like I said in the setup to the podcast, this is how to navigate another tough 2022 spring real estate market as a buyer. What works and what does not work? Okay, so you would think that the market would, would have slowed down somewhat, and it has. It has slowed down but for not the reasons that you would think. Yes, interest rates are climbing a little bit. Yes, there is inflation up the wazoo. Yes, there is uh, increase in gas prices, which is increasing the cost of goods and services, delivery fees, um, and it's putting a strain on the pocketbooks of all, of, of all Americans. However, the pushback in all of this is that we're still woefully low on inventory. Again, I'm going to repeat that. We're still woefully low on inventory. And so until inventory comes up to a level that's more of a balanced state, 
there are still a lot, despite the inflationary pressures on the average household, there are still a lot of people in the real estate market that are looking for a place to live and they have money for various reasons, whether it's been investments, inheritance, um, whether it's been um, uh, jobs with you know uh, uh, continued growth or they're selling homes and cashing out on equity. There are still people that are very well positioned in the marketplace um, to still go out there and create competition that is driving prices up in the real estate market. So the the balance, you know, you have one one side pushing itself this way and you have another side pushing it another direction and they're meeting in the middle and they're they're pushing against each other, creating resistance. And so that's why you're not seeing the market slow down. There just is not enough inventory. But with that being said, how do you as a buyer compete in the toughest part of the real estate season, the spring? February, March, April, May. The springtime is the hottest part of the year for real estate because this is when people are planning on moving. Um, they want to get moved before school gets out so that when school does get out, they can go on vacation and come back to their new home. They're not still worried about a transition um, when they're um, when the kids are out of school and people don't necessarily like to move when kids start school and back in the old days. And yes, I am old. I turned 55 this year um, back in the old days in the 80s when I was going to elementary school and high school. Summer vacation was three months long. You were out in June and you didn't go back to school until September. And so the real estate market was stretched a little bit longer because families had three months to vacation. Now kids are going back to school in August, which compresses the um, vacation time period. So everybody is off doing vacation all at the same time. It's all compressed into a 60 day time frame and you lose half of your buyers in the market because of that, because most families who are well positioned who have been planning on buying are hitting it hard in the spring and the sellers know it. So people who have been planning on selling their home have been gearing themselves up to have it ready to hit the market at when at a time when the most um, optimal buyers are out there. So you're you're competing with the best of the best, right? It's like the Olympics of purchasing homes every spring that hits. So if you're a buyer and you're buying now, there are certain things that you absolutely have to do in order to have a chance to get a home in this market. And the first thing is you absolutely have to be pre-approved. You need to have your financing in place. You cannot go to a store that accepts credit only and not have a credit card in your hand to use. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. And I'm going to emphasize that you do not want to waste your time. If you're deadly serious about buying a home, get pre-approved from a lender and find out what your financing looks like. Number two, find out where your top end is as far as purchasing a home and target somewhere below that in looking for homes to buy. The reason for that is there are so many buyers in the market still with the amount of inventory being so low that they're bidding up the list price. Um, and there are a few markets, however, where that's not happening and we'll get to that. But in, to, in the markets that are close to uh, city centers, jobs and um, educational facilities, like in the Bay Area, we would call that the San Jose Bay Area. Uh, so if we're looking around San Jose, Cupertino, Campbell, Almaden Valley, uh, Evergreen, uh, Mountain View, um, and all of those spaces where it's high tech driven all the way up the peninsula to San Francisco, you're going to have a high, a high, high amount of competition, especially on the West side near the coast. So, um, where was I going with this up oh, reset hit the glockenspiel. All right. Um, where was I going with this? Um, so you're going to have a lot of competition, right? And you're dealing with the best of the best that are looking for housing in these areas. And it's still really hot here. Um, as far as popularity and people wanting to be close to work. So what has, what is um, there, but there has been a shift. So this is where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to, I've got 40 different things on my brain that I'm trying to get out to you in a logical format and I'm, I'm getting cross wired in my head. So in those locations in the city centers, it's still really hot. And within 30 to 45 minutes commute time, 
to your um, job site, those areas are absolutely still on fire and there's still low inventory there. Okay. Now, when you get outside of a 45 minute commute, you are seeing a slowdown in the market. And the reason is the pa pandemic has waned and um, jobs are now requiring people to come back into the office. Now, back in 2020 and 2021, when everybody was working remotely and we thought the pandemic was never going to end, um, employers were very, were, were okay. They were very happy to have you working remotely. And what that, what, what happened in that scenario is people started moving out and pushing outside of that 45 minute commute time frame because they didn't have to drive, right? You didn't have to, did not have to go into the office. You could work remotely and people were even leaving the state and working remotely in lower cost of living areas. Okay. So what's changed? The pandemic has waned and gas prices have gone through the roof. It cost me 75 bucks to put in 13 gallons worth of gas. Now, by the grace of God, and I give him all the credit and all the praise, I am able to, at this point, afford it. But there are a lot of people out there who cannot, and it plays heavily into their decision-making process as far as where they're going to purchase a home to live. So, within that 45-minute drive time, though of where the major um, corporations are and where the jobs are located, those houses are seeing a major bump this year. I did not expect to see it. I thought it would kind of slow down, especially with inflation and uh, higher interest rates and gas prices going up and the threat of war, but it has not happened. We are still seeing over asking offers coming in by large dollar amounts. So that's why it is important that if you're targeting areas within 45, within a 45 minute drive of your job, that you look at a house that's maybe a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars beneath your top end. Start there and then work your way up because that's what I'm seeing in the marketplace. Now, when you get outside of that 45 minute drive, the market has definitely slowed down. We're not seeing offers way over asking. We're seeing offers right at asking or maybe a couple of thousand dollars over. So if you're one of those people who still have a job that allows you to work, work remotely or you're moving towards retirement um, and you can negotiate a deal, you can actually get a deal in areas that are outside of that 45 minute drive time and you should take advantage of it because you can go to your top end and still get what you want. And because the price pressure is not driving prices up, you can get more for your money in those areas. Okay. So that's, that's my advice for you as far as first two steps in buying one, get pre-approved, have your cash ready, have your pre-approval ready. And then two, target homes that are a hundred thousand to 200,000 below your top end. So you can be ready to negotiate upwards. If you're in that area, that's within 45 minutes of a drive time. If you're outside of that area, you can work in work on buying a house more towards your top end budget to get the most amount of space uh, uh, possible. Now, what's the third, what's the third bit of advice? Go in all out. Do not hold back because sellers are not going to give you a counter offer on price. The market is too strong for sellers to do that. And what most buyers are not aware of, especially if they've never owned a home or they haven't, or they're not selling a home to buy a home, is it generally speaking takes anywhere between three to six months to get a house ready for sale. And it's a lot of work, a ton of work for the seller. They're repairing items. Uh, they're decluttering and moving things out. They're throwing away trash that they've accumulated for a long period of time. They're having to do minor repair work, either on the interior or the exterior. They're repainting if they haven't painted the interior and the exterior. They're putting in landscaping. They're packing. They're doing a lot of what we call sweat equity in order to get that house ready for sale. Then on top of that, the realtor shows up and hands up a stack of papers about a quarter of an inch thick. If you can see me, quarter of an inch thick, 
or you can hear me, you get the idea of disclosures that they must fill out. Now, if they've lived in a house for 10, 15 years, they've got to rack their brain about the different um, alterations or repairs they may have made or things that have happened to the house that they need to disclose to the potential buyers to make sure that they're aware of what's going on with the property. And that takes time. It's a ment it's mental gymnastics along with the physical effort of getting the house ready for sale. So by the time they get done with all of that and it's on the market and it looks beautiful and all the pictures have been taken and you come walking in the door, they're done. Okay. They are done. They're finished. They don't want to do any more work at this point. They want to sit back and catch the money, catch the offers. And if there's more than one, all they're going to do is line them up and see who's got the highest dollar amount with the strongest down payment and with the least amount of contingencies in the offer that they feel comfortable with. And they're going to take it. And even if it's not exactly the way they, they want it, they will, they will negotiate terms with one party, the strongest offer with the strongest amount of money. They'll negotiate with them and all the others will be pushed aside. So if you have a real estate professional that's telling you that you can write and try to negotiate price and they're going to counter you back, they are not leading you down a, a good road. They're leading you down a path that's not accurate. In this market, you need to go in strong, so strong with your offer that if you don't get the house, you're not upset. You're going to tell yourself, hey, that's the best I could possibly do. So it wasn't meant to be. And then it wasn't. So the next bit of advice I have for you is be patient and persistent. You will likely get beat up in this market. You will make offer after offer after offer after offer and keep losing and losing and losing. And there's going to be a time when you feel like quitting. And my advice to you is don't quit. The people or the persons that are persistent and never give up wind up winning. That's just the way it is in any type of of struggle in the world where you have to struggle for something really hard. If you do not quit, you will attain your goal. You may take a breather, catch your breath, maybe a week at the most, but do not step away from the market. You're in it. You're learning. You're growing with every failure. Don't quit. Be persistent. Be patient because the house that you are supposed to live in is waiting for you. And if you don't give up, you will get into it. And right now, the prize in this market is the house. There's nothing more than that. The house is the prize. Because now you're in the market with everyone else and you're, and you're riding the wave. Now, can I predict to you how long that wave is going to last? Or whether it's going to come down or if it's going to keep going? No. But I can tell you that as a real estate professional who's been in the market in California since 2005, I have seen the market crash. It crashed like it's never crashed before in the history of real estate in the state of California because it was made up of financing that had nothing in it but air. And when that bubble broke, everything came crashing down. And you know what the, the word on the street was during that time is the market will never recover. The market will never come back. It was gloom and doom. And you know what the smart money did is when it hit rock bottom, it went out and bought houses at a cheap price and they held them and rented them out and they still used that asset to kick off cash to make money. And when the market turned around because it did, they were sitting pretty. And here's my other piece of advice and I'm putting on my tinfoil hat. All right. So bear with me. Those that control the levers of power who have real money will never let an, a market completely go down and never come back because they're in it too. You don't see it, but they're in it. They have multiple properties, apartment buildings, commercial real estate. If it comes down, 
then they have side cash and they're going to pick up properties and then they're going to work together to bring it back because they don't want to lose either. And so whenever you see it go down, it's going to come back up. It's a cyclical cycle. Things go up and they come down and they go up and they come down. Nothing ever stays high and nothing ever stays low. It's just a pattern of life. So my other advice is on an investment strategy, always have cash available. Stock it away when times are good. Put it aside. Not only is it, is it there for you to hold you up if things go down, but it's also a place for you to be able to invest when, when prices come down and then take advantage of a down market. Now, my last piece of advice is do not wait for a down market because nobody knows when it's going to happen. And I've, I've worked with buyers that said, I'm going to wait for the prices to come down. They said that five years ago and the prices haven't come down and they're never going to go back at least based on what I can see. And I'm never, and just because I said never, it probably is going to happen. But based on what's currently setting up the market the way it is now, it doesn't appear as if it will go back down to those levels. And one of the reasons is that the market in real estate today is made up of real assets. Back during 2005, 2006, people were borrowing money with zero money down and interest only payments. So they had no skin in the game. So when the market crashed, they walked away from the house because all they had were a few, a year or two worth of payments into it. They didn't have a hundred thousand dollar down payment. They didn't have a $50,000 down payment that they were walking away from. When the market went back up because of the lending rules that changed, we saw in the industry 50% down, 20% down, 75% down, all cash deals. So if you own a home that you paid $1 million for with cash, all cash, are you going to walk away from that asset just because the market gets a little tight? No, you're not. What you're going to do is you're going to say, I'm staying right here where I'm at and I'm going to ride this thing out, but I am not going to sell and give away my house and and take a bath on a million dollars in cash because that's the mentality of a person who's got skin in the game so i don't see the market doing a massive crash like it did before because there's too much money in the foundation of these homes for people to walk away from them all right so that's that's how you're gonna have to do it if you're a buyer okay and the other thing is you're gonna have to play around with contingencies i know you don't want to hear it but because the market's so strong people are coming in with no loan contingency no appraisal contingency no inspection contingency all right there are still some protections in the law out there and if you want to know what they are give me a call stephen thayard with good patriot realty 408-472-0817 Again, 408-472-0817. I'd be happy to walk through those with you. However, you're going to have to sack uh uh you're going to have to um go in knowing that you're you're gonna have to waive these things in order for your um offer to compete. Okay. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. However, if you're outside of a 45 minute commute, you may have an opportunity to do a little bit more negotiating, leave in your contingencies, offer just asking, and if the house is in disrepair, maybe, maybe, maybe um, get some money off or have the seller make some of those repairs. All right, so that's it for this week. I hope it was helpful for you. If you are a buyer looking into moving into this market, um, and you want to buy in the spring and you have more questions about your specific situation, give me a call, 408-472-0817. Stephen Thayard with Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership. California DRE number 01700019. And um, here's a bonus tip as we walk out the door. If you don't want to compete, try to buy your house in um, the beginning of the school year there's a couple of week lag when a lot of buyers are just distracted with getting their kids into into school and over uh, the Christmas and Thanksgiving Thanksgiving holiday. We lose a lot of buyers that that way as well because they've kind of hung up their hat for the holiday and they're going to start again in the next year. 
and um, you may be able to get into a house without having um, to deal with all the competition. Real estate is seasonal. It is seasonal. It just is. All right. With that being said, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, oh, we're in a period of Lent. For all of my uh, uh, Christian friends out there, we're looking forward to uh, Easter and celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great Lent season as we shift our hearts towards hope. And um, if you're not, uh, then that's okay too. Easter's coming up. But uh, I pray that you would, um, I've never known anyone who's met and followed the Lord Jesus and not been happier after it. So um, I would ask you to consider, but I will leave you with this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and not be, and do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. All right, folks, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you again, hopefully next week, God willing, on another episode of the Real Estate Connection brought to you by Good Patriot Realty. A salute to home ownership. California DRE number 0170001940847208470817. 408-472-0817. This has been The Real Estate Connection with Realtor and Certified Probate and Real Estate Specialist Stephen Thayard. Licensed Cal BRE number 0170019. For more information on this program, visit realestateconnectionradio.com. To contact Stephen directly, call 408-472-0817 or email info at realestateconnectionradio.com. And be sure to tune in next week at this time for The Real Estate Connection.